um, in her introduction, Speaker Pelosi um, uh, showered a lot of praise upon me, so I feel as if I'm up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think some portion of her sort of praising is, I think, a little exaggeration. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps since we personally a very close sort of friend, and I always appreciate his, uh, her sort of, sort of firm stand on American principles. And then through that way, this is sometimes her act almost like fearlessly. That's important. So I admire. So we. Uh, So we become a very close friend. Therefore, uh, some too much nice word from a friend is possible. <laughs> <laughs> May not be very realistic. <clears throat> the speaker, respected speaker, and the female speaker, Re. Uh, or <laughs> just uh, uh, one week my tour in Canada. Uh, in Vancouver, there were a few days, some discussion about compassion, uh, human values, these things. So since uh, several years, I have sort of strong view that uh, in order to promote human compassion, then biologically, female have more sort of potential. Firstly, to provide their own child, uh, I think it means the whole love and compassion. Uh, one, I think, example, one time long flight from Europe to uh, Japan or somewhere, very long flight, whole night flight. So uh, in, the, in the business class, uh, there are one couple with two children. One, I think maybe six, seven year old. So that little bit easier to uh, handle. But another one, very young. Uh, always shouting or crying like that. <laughs> so, the, uh, the, at the early period, night, mm, both parents were taking care about that you see, small child. When child running here and there, and then you see the occasionally father come, sometimes the mother come. And then around midnight, father no longer there. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Father is just slept. <laughs> but the mother, whole night, you see, taking full sort of attention, but pay attention to our child. The next morning, uh, her eye becomes red. This is one example. Bi biological factor, you see, tremendous sort of affection towards one's own child. So therefore, even some scientists, you see, mention the response to others' pain. The, because of biological factor, females have more sensitivity. So I, now these days, I always urge, you see, the females, uh, you should take more active role for promoting of these uh, human values. And firstly, they should provide maximum affection to their child. And through that way, uh, and in the meantime, also you see they show in the society the value of affection. So when I say, uh, uh, 
again, as I talk, uh, mention is this thing. Then, then at that time, I also mentioned, oh, some people may see me as a feminist. <laughs> then, as I did, Mary Robinson, she found, you see, used that word. Oh, now, now when she introduced me, or when she described me, or oh, feminist Dalai Lama, <laughs> like that. Anyway, so, so, I, so I really you see, feel the female, like here, speaker, leadership, more active role, I think is good. Okay. Uh, this is no connection <laughs> without, uh, without meeting the rest. Uh, just I felt like that, so I expressed. <laughs> oh. Here in this country, freedom of speech there, so I enjoy freedom of speech. <laughs> I think furthermore, I always, whenever I talk, I don't care what is the protocol or these things. No. <laughs> Simply, you see there, I always feel I am talking with a human being, nothing differences. So whatever I feel, so I always see, because, because of the speak, like that. So now, more serious now. <laughs> oh, indeed, I'm very, very happy uh, to give this award to one, uh, I think, very distinguished sort of two person. And first, the Julie Taff. Although her no longer with us. But many people's mind, the memory about her, about her face, about her dedication, about her warm heartedness. So, so when I give this to her husband, and also before that, I met also uh, two daughters of her. Very moving. One daughter actually showing tear. That's a human precious. Ah, precious quality. Precious quality. Real sort of strong feeling, positive feeling, love. Compassion, respect, appreciation. I wish majority of human beings have that kind of feel, that kind of quality. Then I think our world really, truly become very happy human home. That's quite sure. But we are lacking that, so we need more effort for that. So, so the Julie Taff. Uh, an early part of her life, I don't know, but at least when she became special coordinator uh, for Tibet, uh, I had many occasion meeting, and as you mentioned, she also she came to Dhamsala. She always showing genuine sort of sense of concern on human warmth. And then later, later part, her physical not good. Sometimes a little sort of, I think it seems some, sometimes it's a little swelling, isn't it? Hmm? Swelling. Hmm? Uh, in any way, her health not good. But then, despite that, her mind is very warm, very sort of clear, and always showing genuine sense of concern of the Benedictine community, like that. So, so I just you see, expressed to their family member, it is nature of our life. Yesterday also I mentioned, there's birth, there's end. It's logical. Then also yesterday afternoon, I visit 
uh, the cemetery where three Kennedy brothers were buried. I also very, very moving. Although I never met is it a, uh, John F. Kennedy, but I received one letter in 1960. Uh, so, although I received, you see, I think, a letter from President Roosevelt, but then I was too small, no botheration about <laughs> American President's letter, but rather the watch is more important. <laughs> <laughs> As you mentioned. <laughs> so, so I think uh, I never mentioned you see, till now. I think today I, I may mention. Actually, is it that watch? Uh, at that time, the Tibetan government's foreign ministry, uh, they, at least the two persons who speak English very well, who actually study in England. The third Dalai sent, I think, about five students. So two of them, when I was there, small, still there. So one uh, person that uh, English speaking, see, he, a Tibetan official, uh, uh, he, uh, I through one official, uh, he sent. Uh, I received the message. Uh, that American delegation, military delegation, I think, military de delegation, is he carried one watch from American president. Then I immediately expressed, oh, I want, I, I want that now. <laughs> <laughs> Before official meeting. <laughs> I think that boy, quite greed. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the letter from the Canada, President Kennedy, you see, the first time I saw the White House, because of the book, uh, paper, paper in the White House. Oh, first time you see, to, uh, to see that. So in any way, uh, mainly, you see, his sort of, I think he stand firmly about American principle, particularly when he visited West Berlin. Uh, things are very tense. Uh, so I, from distance, I have some admiration. Uh, then, uh, his sort of untimely death or assassination, and his, uh, the second brother, also unfortunate things. Then third brother, uh, several times I met. Uh, he looks like some emperor, very, very dignified. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, always showing genuine concern. So therefore, I visited the cemetery. So there, I felt that is everybody's final destination. We have to go there. But then, important thing is, while we are alive, our life should be meaningful. Meaningful means not just making money or using power, not that, but some more dedication for well-being of other. Then, at the time of your death, more people really showing worry or sort of pray. If your life, while you exist, your life utilized for uh, just for money, or worst thing, exploit on other, bully on other, then at the time of your death, I think many people say, oh, how, Kazuda, how good. Now that person gone. <laughs> no one pray for you. <laughs> it is sad. It is sad. And she, she had cheetahs. Um, some people may say, in fact, uh, God riddance, you know, should have gone <laughs> before than that. Mm. You should have left early. <laughs> so, so therefore, so therefore, important is while we are alive, utilize our time, our life, something meaningful, something benefit to the rest of the community, the rest of the humanity. So, Judith, uh, Judith Tuff, I think because she 
sort of dedicated for well-being of human brother sister. So many people remember her. So thank you, thank you. Please, here uh, yeah, this is the brother sisters. Please pray for her, and also pray for her beautiful two daughters and one son. Please pray. Now, one issue. I am very happy to see his dress. <laughs> Truly, one Chinese. <laughs> Looks not modernized Chinese, <laughs> but really <laughs> two Chinese who carry thousand years traditions. I glad that. Very good. Oh, then his work. A writer, I think, gained a lot of experiences as a result of visits in different areas, and also in Tibet. Uh, he acquired, I think, sufficient knowledge about the value of Tibetan culture and Tibetan society. So his thinking is much more close with the reality. Not so thinking of fantasies like that. Fantasies like that. So he wrote articles, many articles, and some books. So which I think eventually were very helpful to Hasulta to get more awareness and wider Chinese possibly, uh, I think mainly writers or intellectuals. So I appreciate. And also you found one Tibetan girl. <laughs> 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 that also I think good, good sign. You see in in the seventh century. Tibetan emperor, uh, although at the beginning, I think, uh, some wife from within Tibetan community, and also he uh, got one, one princess from Nepal, but he's still discontented. So he brought one princess, princess, Re, princess from Chinese emperor. <laughs> so you see, sometimes, you see, these, you see, uh, what's the marriage. That also is helpful to get deeper understanding uh, each other sort of culture or way of life. So in any way, he very much devoted uh, about just cause. All Tibetan supporters among Chinese or among Indian, among European, among American, uh, whoever, whoever uh, I always describe them. I do not consider you a pro-Tibetan, but rather pro-justice. Yeah. And also those supporters, some actually see, clearly told me, because your struggle caring strictly to non-violence, therefore we come to help you, we come to support you. One day if you involve violence, then our support withdraws. So therefore, that's very clear. This, our supporters are not pro Tibet, but pro justice, pro non violence. And certainly, these people, not some kind of anti Chinese sort of group. Often, the Chinese government, unfortunately, describes these are, what say, Western anti Chinese forces. And from that way, I think many of these people should, should consider as a part of Western anti-Chinese forces. No, certainly not. Many of these people, very close fr friendship with Chinese, with Chinese leaders. Like Richard Blum, 
very close sort of friend, the former president of Jiang Zemin, isn't it? Hmm? So meantime, very much supported for our cause. Not brute Tibetan anti-Chinese, no, certainly. They are friend of both. What their interest is, all oh, this sort of ongoing difficulties or problems, this should end. No one's interest. Tibetans suffer. The Chinese government also always facing embarrassment. No criticism. And also, you see, very bad for unity. In order to build real Kung Ho Go. Because Kung Ho Go is like Jitin Nyam Ji. No. Or something. In, in English word, People's Republic of China, just a republic. But in Tibetan, as well as the Chinese, the Kung Ho Go means Tunghua Mima Jitin 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 Yes, United People's but Country. United People's definitely. United People's Country. So I love that word. It's a different uh, groups, different culture, different language, different script. But for common interest, we can happily join and one. I always admire European Union, students of European Union. One my German Professor, uh, uh, professor, uh, I consider him as my tutor for quantum, quantum physics. A wonderful von Wetzika, the former German president, sort of, I think, elder brother, elder brother. Now he no longer. Uh, so one time, once see, he told me when he was young. And every German eye, French, is their enemy. Similarly, in the eyes of French, German are their enemy. When, when we met, when he told, told me this story, I think in the 90s, I think. So then he told me, nowadays, no longer that feeling. Each other consider very close friend, neighbor. So therefore, they, in the European continent, small, small community, small, small nations, this is two centuries fought for their own sovereignty of these things. But now that, in later part of the 20th century, no longer relevant. Important is common interest and economy. And they produce euro. I think another reason may be a little bit compete with US dollar. It is anyway. So these are, I think it's a good example. I often tell you the European friends, you in the past, colonialism, imperialism, maximum exploitation on other part of the world, other part of the human brothers, sisters, you are very bad. But eventually, you gain more experience, becoming more mature, maturity way. So the idea of self self right, 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 I asked, I asked her, since you observed whole century, because at that time, her, her own age, uh, at 96. So, she observed whole century. So I asked her, uh, since you observed the whole century, so do you think the world becomes better or remains the same or worse without hesitation? She mentioned better when she was young. No one talking about human right or right of self-determination. Nowadays, these become universal, she told me. So, so these ideas has come from the West, come from the European, or Europe, like that. So therefore, the European 
people seems to seem more mature. Uh, I think out of their bad manners in the past centuries. <laughs> so, so I always accepted. So one time in India, the I think 50s, uh, one great sort of Indian saint, and occasionally he also involved politics. Uh, Bhuno Babaji. Also, you see, one time you see, they express the idea of A, B, C. That means A, Afghanistan, B, Burma, C, Sri Lanka, then India, Pakistan, all united, some kind of federal sort of federation. A federation. I think if that idea materialized, I think much less problem on that continent. Clear. Look, India. It's almost as similar as the population that of China, that of China. Now near one billion. Uh, Eastern Indian, West, or South, North, different language, different script. Each claim their own script is even superior. That I have a feeling. But uh, equality, freedom of speech, democracy, independent judiciary. <coughs> so India maintained very stable. I hope you see Chinese also, I think, should learn. Unity, stability, uh, only through, because it is not like, I said this, stability and unity, only through suppression, no, India through democracy, through openness, through equality. Of course, some bad things still there, but overall, I think India. I think there are many things that our Chinese brothers and sisters can learn from that. So, so my point is, you see, uh, I am not sort of, or say the, uh, I always love the kung ho ko, unity, uh, on the basis of equality. And eventually, hopefully, independent judiciary. Then I think immediate sort of necessary is the uh, freedom of press. That I think very, very essential. Many Chinese, because of their government propaganda, see, they create wrong impression. So these people feel, oh, we Tibetan, and particularly the Dalai Lama, as a demon very much sort of was negative towards Chinese, Han Chinese. No. I think many Chinese whom we met now these several years, they know <coughs> we Tibetan. I think, truthfully speaking, I think one of the best friends of Han people. Because not political reason, but in true century, we have very unique, close relation, mainly in the spiritual field. So because of that background, uh, you see, there is always a possibility we can develop genuine friendship on the basis of mutual respect, mutual understanding. So now, the, the sort of information, uh, information about the reality is very, very necessary. In this respect, now these uh, writers really make immense of contribution to understand the reality. So then, about 308, where? Sumja. No? About 300. I mean, he write uh, some suggestion, I think 12 point, and then about 308 scholars or intellectuals with his support. So I very much appreciate these sort of, sort of effort is really helping to remove unnecessary suspicion without trust, full of suspicion. How can develop meaningful sort of dialogue? 
So the greatest obstacle of our dialogue with Chinese government is suspicion, over suspicion. So in that, in, in that, in, in that, that, in that field, the only thing is more interact with Chinese, or say the scholars, or Chinese uh, 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 intellectual levels. And we are doing that. Last over one year, at least from my part, I met a few hundred Chinese scholars and some students also. The two that way, although very small step, but one step, two step, three step, it makes some effect. But we never expect some big change within a few months. Impossible. 50 years passed, another 10 years, 20 years, okay. <laughs> the Japanese spirit, very strong, particularly since last for the, the crisis, last year's crisis, the Tibetan spirit inside Tibet, very strong, even stronger like that. And outside also, sometimes among Tibetans, some a little bit fanatic, <laughs> fanatic, uh, extremist, but overall, quite, I think they're thinking more realistically, so quite happy. So, thank you. I think, apologize. I think if, if my talk is too long, apologize. Thank you. <laughs>